Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about UV mapping, which is probably one of the least preferred things that 3D artists have to do. And when it comes to Blender, even less so, because Blender's UV mapping tools, well, they're not the best. So what we're talking about today, though, is an improvement to them that came about because of Google Summer of Code. Now, if you've never heard of Google Summer of Code, basically every uh, spring, Google has basically a giant list of open source projects where they will pay students through the summer to work on those projects. So if you're interested, if you're a student, Summer of Code, I cover it every year when applications are open. Uh, they sponsor a number of different projects. Uh, as you can see, things like uh, Audacity are in here. And of course, so is Blender. And then in terms of Blender, uh, there were a number of different projects sponsored. One of the other ones that just came about was an improvement to the, the visual uh, the video sequence editor, the nonlinear video editing inside of Blender. But the one we are focusing on today is this one from... I'm going to go with Sid. All right, so Sid here uh, did UV editor improvements. So the project was aimed at improving certain existing UV tool editors and adding some new features to better support uh, workflows involving UDIM textures. Now, if you do not know, a UDIM texture is basically a way of having multiple texture maps on the same um, 3D object. We'll, we'll look at that very briefly. If you don't know texture mapping, I'll give you a very simple primer of what UV mapping is in the first place when we get into Blender. But this is the project we are focusing on. By the way, uh, it is documented here. We will come back to it about what is actually done. So this is his final report on what he accomplished. And if you want to grab this guy, it is a special release here. Go to the Blender, um, the Blender branch builds. I'll show you a link to get to this one. Uh, it is here. Uh, the UV editor improvements. He's also done the edge select support. So these are two uh, versions. Now this hasn't been um, forked back into Blender, but hopefully it is because this is some really nice stuff. So without further ado, let us jump over to Blender. And here we are with our default cube. I'm going to use this to demonstrate everything today. So let's drop that down. Also, I'm going to go back to my browser and we're going to not full screen it so you can see my start bar instead of part of the browser window. All right. So here we are with our 3D object in Blender. UV mapping is basically basically the process of taking a 3D object and creating a translation layer so that you can paste a 2D image on a 3D object. It is the way that we texture map images. So in order to do this, you obviously need the UV editor. So again, this is a custom build of Blender. So here is our object. We'll switch over to edit mode. And there you see these 2D coordinates correspond to uh, vertices and faces and so on in the 3D world. So let's look at what has improved due to this Summer of Code project. And they're nice improvements. So first off, the nicest new one here is if you bring up the Tools window and you go to vert uh, the View, you'll now notice there is a dynamic grid. So you see this grid here in the background? As you zoom in, by the way, it gets more and more uh, uh, granular. That's another improvement that was done here. But what we can do is turn on the dynamic grid. So see here, grid size is one. So basically you have a single square. And now what you can do is basically improve the grid or, or resize the grid uh, dynamically. And this is useful because we've also got new stapping tools. By the way, we've also got some improvements to UDIM. So I said I'd explain UDIM either earlier on. So here we've got for UDIM settings. So now you've got here, 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 and here. So what you can do is basically have four sets of UV coordinates for um, your textures. There's some improvements as far as UDIMs go, and we'll get back to those in a second. But let's get back to the dynamic grid. So with the dynamic grid, you can change the uh, the resolution of your grid in the background, and that goes along with the new snapping tools. So turn snapping on, and you can see here we have a couple of options here. So we can have the absolute grid snapping going on right now. So when I have these grid tools here, if I am grabbing, um, you know, zoom in so you can see. So now dynamic zoom is gone. So as we zoom in and out, it stays with whatever you set here with the dynamic grid. So this gives you the ability to do nice, precise snapping of your movement. So let's go here, we'll grab again, this one right here, and I'll do a move. And see here, we're snapping now directly to our grid. So if I go here and I change the fidelity of our grid, again, it snaps to it. It's going to make doing nice, precise movements a such a nicer experience for sure. Uh, there are a couple of other options when it comes to the snapping here as well. So you got incremental, and then of course, traditional vertices snapping there. Um, you can, uh, let's see, go back here. So, uh, yeah, so that's the big new changes here in terms of this new dynamic grid and the grid snapping. It's going to make uh, precision controls definitely easier to work with. Another thing we can now do um, is you can use Alt and the arrow keys to snap to the next 
spot too. So I'm pressing Alt and then left, right, up and down. And that's another change that's here as well. Another thing that they did is if you're working on multiple UDIMs, so let me go back here. So we've got say the four UDIM sets. You can also now do control. Oops, I didn't mean to. So let's grab the whole thing. I can do control and arrow movement and you can move the selection between the different uh, UDIM grids, which is definitely a nice improvement here as well. So if you're working with UDIMs, life is going to get so much easier at this point in time. Let's go back over here and bye bye default cube. Now what we're going to do is bring in Susan. All right, so we got a monkey going on now. And here you'll see we've got a number of uh, texture islands in place here. Uh, so let's do island selection mode. So here, now have this in place. Well, we've got some really neat tools going on now is you can now go in UV and we can now do a pack islands to area. So I could take the UV I've got. So I've got a selection of UVs going on right now and I could basically just drag out the size I want and boom, it will move that UV island into that space. So this makes resizing and remapping. So let's say we wanted to take this guy, and move it somewhere else. Uh, basically, again, I just go UV and then we do, um, pack islands to area and then I can do a little one right here. Now you'll notice that actually rescaled it as I did it and you may not want to do that. Well, you'll notice down here, we've got some options while doing it. You can actually turn that off and it will use a different um, algorithm for calculating things. Unfortunately, in this particular case, packing area was not big enough for the selected island. Uh, so in that case, what we'd have to do is so let's go here, UV, um, pack island area, we'll make it big enough so you can have it scale to fit or rotate to fit in the area that you're packing. So if you're moving things around, this new feature, this new uh, uh, pack islands to area thing is definitely going to make life a lot easier. Uh, we've also got some changes to the pack island. So when you're doing your pack island uh, it, with the selected object, you can actually say to the closest UDIM now, or you can specify UDIM so we can have it go to whichever you didn't we want in our series. So that's actually another new improvement here as well. So it's gonna make working with islands a lot. So kind of uh, reorganizing and placing islands of UVs a whole lot easier on the whole. And then of course we have the dynamic grid, which is going to make snapping uh, a lot more flexible in terms of what we can do. So now let's go over, oops, wrong video. Let's go over and take a look at his final results. So again, we saw most of this now in the pack islands, you can have the uh, closest UDIM and specified UDIM as options. Uh, the pack island to box area, again, has two different algorithms based off if you got scaling on or off. Uh, we got the new grid for the uh, UV. So you can when you subdivide in with the default grid or you can turn on the dynamic grid and have tight control over uh, the number of squares to have specifically. And then of course we've got changes to snapping. So we got increment snapping um, changes there for subdividing grid. The snapping value is decided based on the visible grid for dynamic grid. The snapping value is equal to the inverse of dynamic grid size. In other words, snapping value is equal to the size of one dynamic grid unit and precision snapping uh, precision snapping is calculated as 0.5 times the snapping value that is currently being used. And then absolute grid snap, we saw that in action earlier on. Uh, I told you earlier about the uh, new arrow key modifier. So control and arrow keys moves between the UDIMs and then alt arrow keys moves between the dynamic grid units. So if you've got the, oops, keep going back to the, that's another video, stay tuned for it. So if I grab, uh, let's do a vertex. All right, so if I grab that guy again, with the control, we move between UDIMs, like so. And with Alt, we move one unit at a time. Now you'll notice I actually have uh, snapping turned off for there. So if I turn to absolute grid snap, and then we do it Alt. Oh. Okay, I might have done that wrong. Absolute grid snap increment. Okay, so maybe this one is... Okay, so the Alt one actually moves it by... Uh, regardless to this. So it moves it by a grid unit. So let's move that guy off. Okay, I turned snap, oh, I thought I turned snapping off. All right, let's so turn that guy out there, turn snapping back on, and then we'll use alt. Yeah, so it's moving it by a grid unit, uh, but it's not snapping it directly. So the new alt and the various arrow keys moves it this way, and then we'll zoom out. Oops. And uh, control moves it 
to the different UDIMs. So if you're working on multiple UDIMs, life just got easier with these UV tools. Uh, generally, the dynamic grid is going to make life a lot easier to work with UDIM tools. Unfortunately, this hasn't necessarily been merged in as of yet. We've also got some changes to the edge selection. This is actually a different build and it's more of a broad thing. So it's not really something I'm going to cover, but I'm going to leave this in. Uh, so the, the release notes are available here with some videos showing each thing in action. I will also dump uh, a link to this guy directly and to the daily builds in general. Of course, you can build this yourself if you wish. Now, do keep in mind that this have not been merged upstream yet, so there's no promise that this will make it in to Blender 3.x, but I don't know why it wouldn't because it's just basically across the board improvements and UV tools definitely is an area where Blender could use some love. And this is the kind of stuff that the uh, Summer of Code is great because it can take the open source projects that we use daily and they can kind of create these smaller, more con um, uh, contained projects for summer students to work on that at the end of the day can have a very tangible influence on, uh, you know, the way that we use our tools. So this is definitely some nice improvements in Blender, and I really hope they get merged upstream because these are quite nice. And do keep in mind, there are other ones uh, that were recently announced. So um, the Blender project ones, again, the other one that they were talking about here is the changes to the uh, video editing timelines. So you'll see things like a preview of the strips when you put them in and so on. Um, that one I'm not going to cover in a particular video today, but it's another project that recently came of age. And if you want to check it out, there's more details available with that one. But today what we're looking at is Sid's excellent work in the UV editor. And I really do hope these make it upstream soon because uh, they're definitely improvements. So let me know what you think of these changes uh, of UV editing in Blender or of UV editing in general. Is it something you despise doing as well? Let me know. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.